G'day all, welcome to another assembly tutorial. So today we're looking at just a few comparison instructions. Uh, these are really interesting. Um, they're actually some more instructions that bridge that gap between x86 and SSE. Um, basically what these instructions do is compare the values in the lowest element of an SSE register and set the x86R flags register to indicate the result. So there are some complications with doing this, as we'll see, because um, some floating point values represent things like NAN. And to help deal with that, there's actually a few of these instructions. Okay, so basically these are the four just here. We've got COMIS, or Compare Scalar Single, uh, COMISD, which is Compare Scalar Double, we've got UCOMIS, which is Unordered Comparison of Scalar Singles, and UCOMISD which is unordered comparison of um, scalar double. So they all compare the lowest uh, two elements from two registers. And yeah, the single versions are from SSE and the double versions are from SSE2. And the unordered versions don't generate exceptions with QNAN. Actually they do. We'll have a look at exactly how they work a bit later. Alrighty, so this is the way that they set the flags. If well, first of all, they take two operands, um, you know, just like most instructions. But um, if the lowest elements are NAN, then, or the lowest element of either uh, operand is NAN, then we're going to get a zero flag set to one, the parity flag is going to be set, and also the carry flag is going to be set. Uh, if the first operand's lowest element is greater than the second operand's lowest element, then all of the flags, those three flags, will be set to zero. Uh, all we've got, op1 is less than op2, or the lowest element in operand1 is less than the lowest element in operand2, and that's going to set the carry flag to 1, but clear the parity and the zero flag. And finally, if they're both exactly equal, operand1 and 2 are exactly equal, uh, the lowest elements in those, I should say, uh, then the zero flag will be set. So, uh, that means that we can pretty much use JZ and JE, or jump on zero, or jump on equals. Uh, after one of these comparisons, so long as you realize that um, the zero flag is also going to be set on NAN. Yeah, so do be careful. Alrighty, so here's an example. Uh, this actually goes for uh, the ordered comparison, or, or the COMIS and COMISD instructions, and it's exactly the same operation pretty much with uh, the unordered comparisons, or UCOMIS and UCOMISD. Um, okay, so we've got COMIS and XMMO, XMM1, and these values here, I seem to have put a big red mark on them, but the top three elements of each operand are completely ignored. Yeah, that's just how it starts. Fair enough. Good slides. Um, okay, so all that's going to happen is 9.2 is going to be compared to 3.6, that's the zeroth element or the lowest element in both and the flag is going to be set accordingly. So right here, uh, 9.2 is greater than 3.6, so we're going to get 0, 0, 0 in the 0 flag, parity flag, and carry flag, respectively. Uh, in almost exactly the same way, if we're using COMISD, or compare scalar double, um, first of all, the top elements of the registers are going to be ignored, and we're only comparing the lowest elements. So 8.7 is going to be compared to 12.6. Uh, 8.7 is less than 12.6, so we're going to get the zero flag reset to zero, the parity flag reset to zero, but the carry flag is going to be set to one to indicate that there was a carry there. So it's almost exactly the same as if you were comparing integers. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how they designed it, so that you could compare um, the lowest elements of SSE registers in a similar way to that which you'd use for integers. Alrighty, now this is where the trouble starts, really. There's there's a few different sorts of NAN. Uh, NAN means not a number, and you get NAN after things like 0 divided by 0. Uh, you'll get an answer of NAN, or not a number. It's just not defined mathematically. Uh, but in programming, or in um, x64 assembly and x86, uh, we've got SNAN as well as QNAN. So SNAN stands for a signaling NAN, and that means that exceptions should be thrown when comparisons or operations are performed with the values. Uh, they're not a number, 
or NAN, the bit pattern for a NAN. Uh, but in addition to that, the most significant bit of the mantissa is set to zero. So if you want to have a look at the exact way that um, IEEE 754 floating point values are represented, then you could check out the um, little mini series that I've been doing on those. Uh, but basically that's bit 22 if you're using single precision floats and bit 51 if you're using double precision floats. So if that's unset or set to zero and there's some other one in the uh, mantissa somewhere, uh, that actually means an SNAM. Uh, if that most significant bit of the mantissa is set to one, then you've got a QNAM, which is a quiet NAN. And that's not going to signal any exceptions. Uh, instead, the CPU is sort of going to do arithmetic on it, but it's pretty much always going to set the answer to NAN. You know, not a number plus three is not a number again, and not a number minus 28 is not a number again. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the difference between SNAN and QNAN. Uh, you might notice in Visual Studio 2010 and 2012 as well, I believe, um, the registers window actually displays QNAN for either of them. Yeah, it doesn't differentiate, but exceptions will be thrown with uh, SNAN. Okay, so this is really the um, the tricky part about this. There's there's a bunch of competing ideas here as to whether or not to signal uh, an exception and you know break the program. Um, for a start, we've got bit number seven of the MXCSR register. Now that's the um, yeah, that's the mask for operations on NANs. So if that's unset or if that's set to zero, then you're sort of asking the CPU to generate exceptions when you do operations on NAN. Uh, if it's set to one, you're telling the CPU to ignore um, those exceptions and just carry on, set the answer to NAN and, and carry on. Uh, but that's not the only thing that indicates whether or not an exception should be thrown. We've also got uh, the actual values being operated on. So like we just saw on the previous slide, um, the values being operated on can be SNAN, but they can also be QNAN. And finally, the instruction itself also has some say as to whether or not to signal um, a floating point invalid operation or not. So these three ideas all compete and... Um, I've not found anywhere uh, that it's actually been specified whether or not uh, the exception will be thrown, so I've just made the following table, uh, this table just here, um, based on my CPU. I'm not sure also that this isn't um, hardware specific. This is the way my CPU works, and uh, that's a Phenom 2, but um, yeah, this is not from the this is not from the Intel or AMD manuals because they sort of are pretty sketchy on it. Um, this is what I've found anyway. If if you're using um, ordered comparisons versus unordered comparisons, the only time that they're different is if MXCSR bit number seven is unmasked or set to zero, and one of your operands is QNAN. Yeah, one or more of your operands is QNAN. So. I've actually written single in this column here, but that's actually singles or doubles. And uh, I've highlighted in red these two rows just here and these two rows down here. Uh, those are the only circumstances that um, UCOMIS or UCOMISD, the unordered comparisons, are different from the ordered comparisons. Um, usually, you, you know, you don't really worry about that and you're just interested in the way that they set the uh, flags. But this might be interesting to know. So, I don't know, just an example. Maybe we've got a QNAN for one operand, and the other operand might be ordered. So ordered just means a normal number. That could be, you know, 25.8 or, or even a denormal number as well. It could be, you know, a really, really small number. Um, so if those, are, if those are our two operands and MXCSR bit number 7 is set to 0 or unmasked, and we're trying to perform an arithmetic operation, maybe it's a multiply or a subtract or add, normal arithmetic operation, then this is the result just here. We're going to get um, operand 1 is going to be the answer. That's going to be stored in uh, operand 1, the destination. So nothing's going to happen pretty much <laughs> would be a summary of that. Uh, let's have a look at here, maybe this one for another example. Uh, let's say that operand 1, the lowest element, is an SNAN. Let's say that operand 2 is a QNAN and MXCSR bit number 7 is masked or is 1. 
and we're trying to do arithmetic. Well, what's going to happen there is operand 1 is going to be changed to a QNAN. So the CPU never actually generates an SNAN. And uh, if you do an operation on an SNAN, uh, it'll change it to QNAN. So it'll just flip that bit, that one bit that we were talking about, the most significant bit of the Mantissa. All right, maybe one more example. Let's say that we've got um, this one. We've got a QNAN as first operand and an SNAN as the second operand. And the MXCSR bit is set to 1. And we're trying to do a comparison. So the comparisons here are either um, U commis or commis. So the ordered comparison or unordered comparison. Well, the answer to that is going to be that um, the zero flag, the parity flag, and the carry flag are all set to 1. Because U commis and commis, uh, if there's a QNAN or an SNAN as one or more of the operands, yeah, they set all of the flags to 1. Okay, so I hope this table is useful. I'll put this up on the website for you to download. And um, I don't think there's any other place where you can get just a concise list of exactly, you know, what these operations are going to return or whether or not they're going to return an exception. But if you can find a list, it'll be really handy. And uh, leave a comment. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say about these um, comparison instructions. They're quite cool. Use them to compare SSE registers and set the R flags. Alright, thank you for listening. See ya. Oh, what am I doing?